All right, David Pollock, uh, three games in for Georgia and uh, one SEC game. I want to start out with Carson Beck. Uh, everyone has a question about this guy and where he's progressing. I'll tell you where I'm coming from. I, I think that he's doing all right. Uh, I think he's doing all you can ask for for a guy that's starting for the first time, starting in the league for the first time, and with a new offensive coordinator. It's hard to replace both of those components in a football team. What are you seeing from number 15 out there three games in? I, I'm with you. I, I'm not I'm not overreacting by any stretch. Um, listen, I, if you saw Stetson Bennett three starts in, you'd be like, mm, I, oh, I'm sorry. If you start set, if you saw Stetson Bennett 10 starts in, Georgia fans were still complaining. So I, I think that um, the new system is a real thing. It's a real deal. Like learning that. I mean, if, if you remember Carson – Carson Beck actually played with Munkin's son in high school. Like, so his relationship with Munkin went way back and probably was more familiar, obviously, with the old offense than, than the new offense. I, I don't know if people notice this kind of stuff or not, but if you watch Edwards come back this past week, huge difference. And I, and I say that he's not the most talented guy in the world, but he's their best running back. He's the best guy that sees it and turns second and seven to second and five. And and I think that's a big deal. I, I would argue Bell might be the next best back, which is kind of crazy with the number 86. Um, so I, I think they're kind of breaking in. Um, I, I think what I see from the, the offense is I think Bobo's going to be willing to force feed Bowers, which is a great idea. Um, I think the weapons with McConkey are going to get healthier. You're going to continue to get experience with Dom down the road, more experience with Dom down the road. You saw Ra Ra, you know, get more playing time. I think he'll continue to get playing time. And one thing I want you to look for in the future, and it's not going to happen for a little while, probably till the Auburn game, is when you get lucky at tight end, this often, when you get him back at tight end, listen, people don't know who lucky is. He's one of the lucky lineage, you know, the triplets played back in the day for the dogs. He's a tight end and he's a dog. He's a dog. He's mean. Like he, he's mean. He's nasty, and and he's going to complement and make this offense easier to call. Because I still think there's a there's a little bit of a Darnell Washington holdover that yep. you don't realize how easy he made this offense because of dictating the personnel and what they could and couldn't do. Um, so I'm with you. Still a work in progress. I like what I've seen from Beck. And one thing, God, this is a long winded answer, and I apologize. One thing, Wes, that I gotta see more of. And I get frustrated with watching on tape. If you're going to run the zone read, and that's going to be one of your biggest plays, Beck has shown me enough athletic ability already. The draw in, the, in game one, uh, last week against South Carolina, pulling it down, running, scrambling. He's a good athlete. Uh, he's not a great athlete. He's somewhere between Stetson and Fromm, but closer to Stetson than Fromm probably. Um, and I want to see more of that in the offense to open up even more of the rushing lanes. Yeah, keep him honest. Uh, it's kind of a mixed bag for Georgia right now, David, with, uh, you know, a lot of injuries, but Georgia fans are definitely not going to want to hear injuries as an excuse. I know that, but we've, we've seen this team that we kind of saw last year. That's kind of playing with its food a little bit. They dominate in the second half against South Carolina, but start a little bit slow. Which team do you think this really is? Can we tell at this point, or do you need to see them go out and have a game like they had against Oregon to really feel confident that that team is uh, who this Georgia team can be? Well, I, I think that I've seen enough from Kirby and company. And, and and one thing that I don't know if it's getting talked about a lot or not, but um, like the clock is different this year. And the clock changes, you know, college football and it changes the amount of possession. I mean, they had the ball one time in the first quarter the other day. Crazy. You know, like that's a – that's a different deal with a running clock consistently now, whether it's a first down and uh, out of bounds, it continues to roll. Um, so I think that the good thing about that is if you're a fan of good coaching, adjustments are going to be bigger. Starts of games are going to be bigger. I think that favors Kirby and company. I think they'll continue to develop a lot of puppies on defense, a lot of puppies, a lot of guys that – um, spe specifically to me on the edges that you're just seeing rotate in and out. And I think I a hundred percent still think they're figuring that out. I, I mean, for example, you've been covering Georgia for a while, Wes. When's the last time you saw them at one time put all of their best pass rushers on the field? It's, it's pretty it, rare. I, I don't, I don't see it very often. Like that's, that's not who we've had to be and who we've been because we've had guys that were both that could rush the passer and, 
um, could play the run and you felt good about those guys, whether it's Wyatt, whether it's, um, you know, uh, Nolan Smith, whether it's any of those guys, I think. So now you're seeing like they're, they're having to put 11 and 13 on the edge and they're having to mix guys in um, along with, you know, not just Michael and uh, with Winslow and Marvin Jones Jr. Like you're trying to find, I think they're trying to find the right combination of people to, 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 to work together. But the one thing you do know defensively is you got the best one, two punch at safety in the country. Yep. Um, and I, and I think that's a great, um, that's a great start. Last one for you. Big picture in the game. You alluded to it with the clock. Uh, I, I think it's, it's just crazy to look at some of these final scores at the end of the day. A lot of games that you used to see in, you know, the fifties, maybe the sixties, there's a lot of these like 44, uh, final scores for teams that are winning close ball games. When you see the the game as a whole, the whole landscape of college football, do you feel like it's going to remain like this all year, where it seems like there's more parity, or do you expect a team, a uh, couple teams, maybe by the end of the year to pull away? Wes, not only do I think that there's more parity, you know, this year, I think moving forward we're going to be in a state of more parity. And I say that because of two things. There's two things that have happened that pissed everybody off in the country. NIL yep. and transfer portal. <laughs> everybody across the country pissed off, don't like it, hate it. The reason that that matters is there's more parity in college football than there's been in a long, long time because people ain't going to Bama to be second team anymore. They're not going to Bama when they can go get paid somewhere else. Bear Alexander wants to be the starter, wants to be the main guy, wants to know he's the guy. Uh, no, you're going to have to earn it every week at Georgia. Okay, pull the ripcord. I'm going to USC. Like, I, I just think that it's here to stay. Um, but I'll say this. When it's still going to be slanted towards Georgia, it's still going to be slanted towards Alabama and Ohio State, when they have their trigger man when they have their quarterback because those they're still getting the best guys top to bottom consistently year round. When you got a great quarterback, you those athletes are going to shine. You know, when you got a great quarterback, you're going to score points. The system's going to work really, really well. Um, so I think we're going to have more parity, but I do think, um, you know, you're still going to see, I think Georgia is going to continue to evolve. I got news for you. If you think FSU is a flash in the pan, I, I think you're wrong. I think FSU is here to stay. Like, They've done the masterful job of transfer portal with great high school recruiting, meshing them together for the time being. A, a, an experienced quarterback, a defensive line that can get after the passer, like they're going to be a problem. Um, so I, I think we'll see more and more parity uh, as we see college football continue to grow. Good stuff, DP. Always good to catch up with you, man. Talk soon. Appreciate you, Wes.